Kant was born in Königsberg, and in Königsberg he died. He lived in Königsberg all his life. Sixty miles was his furthest ride. So while some can claim that their wisdom came from travelling far and wide, Kant can't. But since philosophy's European civil war began between the Brits, Locke, Berkeley, Hume, and Descartes' continental clan with Spinoza and Leibniz, empiricists v. rationalists, can he claim to be the man with the genius and the insight and the long attention span to merge two rival schools of thought into one coherent plan? Yes, indeed, Kant can. According to Hume, philosophy was nearing a state of paralysis, as knowledge just comes from two sources, experience and rational analysis. We can answer empirical questions now through science or observation, and self-contained questions of logic or maths through straightforward calculation. So, if the type of question you ask is neither one of those, the answer to it has to be, sorry, no one knows. All other kinds of thinking are, for Hume, no more than a pose. Show him a book on metaphysics, and onto the bonfire it goes. Prior to Hume, Kant had assumed philosophy the finest vocation. But the more Kant read of what Hume said, the deeper his consternation. Hume woke me from my dogmatic slumber, is a popular Kant quotation. With two types of question worth asking, just two, two prongs on the end of Hume's fork, why should we care for the empty hot air produced when philosophers talk? And that's how David Hume put Kant's nose out of joint, by saying of philosophy, what exactly is the point? Something for Kant to think about when out on his next walk, a very sharp prod up the backside from the twin spikes on Hume's fork. Was this the end for philosophy? No. Kant brought it back from the brink, with a scientific kind of approach to the mind, a rethink about how we think. If you think the whole world is your oyster, Kant has a humbler proposal. The extent of our knowledge is hugely reduced by the tools at our disposal. We know this world through our senses, through our bodies and our brains. Is this meagre equipment truly enough to know all that the world contains? What kind of things are we missing? What signals can't we receive? How can we fathom the unknown unknowns? What dimensions can we not perceive? The answer, says Kant, is we cannot know. Such questions will only frustrate us. Our every experience is limited by our limited apparatus. This universe of phenomena is the one of which we're aware, but there's also what Kant called noumena, all the things that we don't know are there. A phenomenon hits our senses, which we turn into information. A noumenon is a mystery, beyond all imagination. Imperceivable to the senses, inconceivable to the mind, existing on a level out of bounds to humankind. We'll never know what we're missing. It's an unbridgeable divide. This phenomenal world is within our reach, the noumenal, forever outside. Know your limits, in short, was Kant's chastening thought. It's something we humans can't change. Our ambitions may be high, but however hard we try, we'll never know a thing about the things beyond our range. Step by step, Kant wasn't finished yet with his re-examination of the human mindset. When we look at the tools in our toolbox, no experience is direct. Our minds still have to process the perceptions we collect. It's not enough for our eyes to be hit by passing rays of light. Every flash must be refashioned to become what we call sight. Kaleidoscopes of colours, cacophonies of sound, smells and tastes and touches flying in from all around, we'd be impotent receivers of a flood of information, blinded, bedazzled, utterly frazzled, lost in a blizzard of wild stimulation if we had no internal means of organisation. We need some mental interface to make sense of all this sensation. 
and for Kant, the minds equipped since birth to put these things in place, bringing order to chaos through time and space. An awareness of time, the scaffolding of space, born with these two in our toolbox, the entire human race possesses the ability, sense plus sensibility, to create perceptions of the world beyond the capability of a passive database. Kant also now could question David Hume's suggestion that causality had no grounds to exist. If we follow Kant's script, that our minds come pre-equipped with time and space, why not add cause to that list? Impressions from somewhere outside us, fed into, then shaped by the mind. Empiricism and rationalism now in one process combined in a synthesis of philosophies with a scientific coherence, which Kant called transcendental idealism, how we construct appearance.